Hi guys, Stormnose here, and in case you didn't know, two months ago it was confirmed that the first person has already been implanted with Neuralink. That person, Noland Arbau, came into the spotlight and showed us what the implant can do. So far. Today we'll be having a look at what the implant actually is, what it can do, how it works, and whether or not it can turn us into half machines. How much do you think it will cost to get that implant? Leave it in the comments and I'll tell you at the end of the video how much it's estimated to be. First, let's talk a little bit about our brain. It has around 100 billion neurons, which form around 100 trillion synaptic connections. Each neuron can make connections with more than 1000 other neurons. Imagine that it's like a gathering of 100 billion people and each of them are talking to other 1000 people. Now, at this small gathering inside your head, we have another guest. Neuralink will try to understand what everybody's talking about and who's talking to who. Now, if Neuralink manages to do that accurately, it will be able to restore sight in blind people, it will be able to restore locomotory movements in paralyzed people, you'll be able to control a computer with your brain, or maybe even give you a little bit of a superpower and make your sight better than the average person. But wait a second, what is actually the Neuralink? It's a brain-computer interface device, or BCI, around the size of a coin, which is composed of a small, low-power sort of computer, which has 64 threads, which basically look like little hairs, and they are composed of 1024 electrodes, electrical conductors, which go into your brain in order to record and decode your brain activity. Basically, it's trying to understand how your brain works and what part of your brain fires up when you do a certain movement or when you feel a certain feeling. These threads that go into your brain are so incredibly minuscule that they can't be inserted by the human hand. So, a surgical robot has been designed to reliably and efficiently insert those threads exactly where they need to be. The N1 has a battery of around 8 hours which is charged wirelessly through induction. It would have been pretty weird and unnatural to just get a cable and plug it into your skull. Now, let's have a look at how this little computer works and how it manages to translate your thoughts into actions. In essence, through training. Remember how I told you that it records and decodes your brain activity? Let's say that you have a mouse in your hand and you're just thinking of moving the cursor to the left. The Neuralink records and translates your intention of moving your hand to the left into an action on your computer through Bluetooth. A better example is this monkey, which was part of the very first trials of the N1 chip. The threads of the chip are inserted into the motor cortex part of the brain, which manages the motor functions of the body, like moving your arms. The monkey is then given a joystick to move the cursor into a specific box on the screen. When the monkey does that, it is fed banana smoothie to this tube in order to reinforce the behavior and motivate it to continue doing that. Otherwise, it'll be like, hell nah, why am I doing this? The actions associated with the movement are then recorded and decoded. So now the chip knows what particular brain waves tells the monkey's arm to move the joystick in order to move the cursor. And then it's like, uh-huh, I know what that means and then it just moves the cursor. As I've mentioned, Noland Arbau is the first ever person accepted to go through the Neuralink trials and has now recovered and was able to go on a talk and appear in a few videos where he explains his experience and how the whole process went. After a diving accident, he was paralyzed from the shoulders down and now he's unable to move his limbs. After receiving the implant, he's now able to do things on his computer, such as using his mouse to navigate it. And even play Mario Kart and Civilization 6, which by the way, he played for like seven hours in a row. It's absolutely great. I am very happy for him and I believe that we should all support him in his journey. Because you need a heck load of courage to have a small computer implanted in your skull. What we have to keep in mind is that he is the first person from the next thousands to come and he will pave the way for this particular area of science. Good job, man. The only thing is that what Neuralink is doing is somehow not new, but only in one sense, because a few devices the like of Neuralink have been implanted in the past. One example is BrainGate, a device meant to help those with spinal cord injuries or those who have lost control in their limbs. The first experiment on a human subject was done in 2002 and the results were published in 2006. The study showed that a human with tetraplegia was able to control a cursor on a computer screen just by thinking, enabling him to open emails and operate devices such as television. In 2009, BrainGate 2 was carried out, which is the second iteration of the same device and experiment. 
from the same company with the trial still ongoing. In 2012, they demonstrated that one participant was able to control a robotic arm to drink coffee from a bottle. This being the first time when she was able to drink unaided in 15 years. Absolutely insane. Those are just a few of the examples that we can give regarding this field. How much do you say it's going to cost? Apparently, an estimate is at around $10,500, whilst the price will most probably rise to even $50,000 in the future. So we can imagine that only a select few will be able to benefit from such a device, and probably most insurance companies will not pay for it. But I also believe that this device simultaneously can bring something invaluable to us humans. I can't believe how much AI is progressing, at what rate it's progressing, and I think I share some of Elon Musk's beliefs about the danger of its advancement. It is equally possible that AI is a tool for aiding humanity in its progress and a tool or self-conscious machine that will bring our destruction. The truth is that we don't know, but what we do know is that machines are evolving way faster than us humans and our only hope of not lagging behind is to merge with it. Whether or not you share the same stance on this issue, the sole judge will be the future. Now, don't forget to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, ding dong the notification bell, and leave a comment down below. Also, our latest two videos are right here. Bye!